Welcome to first webinar on Java EE6 from jpassion.com. Today we are going to cover Java EE6 overview, which is a very short presentation, and the rest of the presentation will be devoted to uh, learning servlet basics uh, 3.0 basics. And the rest of the topics uh, of this uh, webinar series include CDI basics and CDI advanced and CDI extension. As you can see, CDI is a very important technology in Java EE6 and moving forward. And then we're going to spend three sessions on JSF 2.0, JSF 2.0 basics, JSF 2.0 template and composite components, and JSF 2.0 Ajax. And uh, then we're going to spend some time on JAXRS 1.1. Uh, JAXRS is actually extensively covered in web services course. So we have a JAXRS, uh, JAXRS 1.0, uh, basics on advanced. Uh, this uh, 1.1, uh, we're going to just cover 1.1 newly introduced JAXRS features in, uh, in Java E6. And then JPA 2.0 and EJB 3.1. And uh, we are going to cover servlet 3.0 advanced topics, such as uh, async servlet and things like that. And uh, then we are going to build end-to-end -end application at the end. Okay, so let's start with the Java E6 overview presentation. All right. So if you see the brief, uh, if you see the history evolution of Java EE platform, uh, Java EE platform uh, 1.4 added a web services feature that is uh, the, the, uh, the key aspect of 1.4. Uh, from EE5, ease of development uh, is becoming a very important aspect. Uh, in fact, until Java EE5, uh, Java E platform was considered a very heavy and very difficult to use platform and uh, from Java E5 uh, with the annotation introduction of annotation uh, it's becoming easier to use and with uh, Java E6 uh, it has a theme of right sizing and we'll talk about that in the following slide. So these are the major themes of Java EE6 right sizing. Again, until Java EE6, Java E platform is considered very heavyweight, especially compared to a lightweight platform like a Spring framework. So Java E6 introduces a concept of profile and it prunes some of the technologies that are not being used. So basically, the idea of right sizing is use only what you need. And uh, again, it introduced the concept of profile, especially uh, web profile. And uh, there is also uh, EJB Lite. We'll talk about that in the following slide. And extensibility or pluggability is also an important theme. So in fact, we're going to cover one of these pluggability feature in Servlet 3.0 today. So basically lets you uh, add third-party frameworks or libraries without extra configuration. So you can actually have a self-contained framework job file and that's the only thing that is needed, meaning you don't have to change web.xml file and things like that. As I said, easy of development, uh, uh, the uh, theme is uh, continued from Java E5. So again, the concept of default over configuration. Uh, dependence injection and declarative programming uh, using annotation. These are all uh, the aspects of modern uh, frameworks and Java E6 definitely uh, take advantage of those themes. Okay, so this is a concept of profile. So full Java E6 contains many technologies and map profile is basically a set of technologies that are used only for building web application. And in the future, there could be more profiles. And these profiles will be developed separately from Java EE6 platform. So web profile, as I said, is a subset of full platform and it is for web development and is a separate specification and it will evolve at its own pace. Uh, in the future, again, other profiles uh, might actually be introduced. So on the right side of this slide, you can see the set of technologies that make up a web profile, so GSF, uh, servlet, JSP, expression language, JSTL, and uh, then uh, EJB Lite, managed beans, interceptors, JTA, JPA, bean validation, 
DI and CDI. So again, this is gonna the topics. This is going to be the topic that we are going to cover in this Java E six six series uh, webinar webinar series. Uh, pruning is basically removing all the technologies uh, that are not uh, being used, uh, which includes Jacks RPC, old uh, CMP, uh, the uh, Jacks R, and uh, JSR eighty eight. So these are uh, deprecated. Uh, EJB Lite is a subset of EJB 3.1. Uh, again, until Java EE 5, actually, EJB was considered, meaning EJB 3.0, which was introduced as part of Java EE 5, EJB was considered very heavyweight. Uh, however, EJB has one good thing. It actually supports uh, the uh, transaction uh, you know, very well. Uh, so, uh, idea of EJB Lite is uh, having uh, the, the uh, letting people to be able to actually take advantage of EJB uh, without actually having uh, the baggage of all the extra things that come with the EJB. So it contains the uh, uh, session bin, injection, transaction, interceptors, and security. So th th those are the features uh, that are considered really good in EJB, and you can now use EJB these EJB features on your web application because the web profile contains EJB Lite, so it's part of the web profile, and other EJB features uh, are not included in EJB Lite, which means you don't have to actually use these features in your web application. Okay, so moving forward, uh, these are the new specs on the left side that I introduced, and on the right side, these are updated specs. All right, so that's pretty much it. Uh, the one hands-on lab, uh, the hands-on lab that uh, for this particular topic is basically uh, installing Glassfish 2. Uh, first, first exercise is install, installing Java E6 Java app. If you're using NetBeans, uh, you can actually right-click and uh, any uh, class, and you should be able to see uh, context-sensitive documentation on uh, Java E6 uh, classes. On Glassfish, uh, I'm sorry, on e the Eclipse, however, the, the Java E6 Java doc, uh, file is not actually in the uh, mist, the uh, in the uh, central Maven, so you have to actually uh, install it yourself, and then you should be able to have a context-sensitive Java document. So let me actually show you how you can do that. So you have to go to this website and get, uh, get the uh, Java E6 uh, documentation, so you just download it. And uh, then you're gonna actually install it on your own uh, Maven repository on your own, on your on your machine. So basically, you can just cut and paste this command, and then it will install the jar file into your local repository right here. In my case is you just saying .m2 repository end. And then uh, what you can do is, uh, you know, in Eclipse, you can actually right click uh, this Java E Web API jar file and Maven and download Java doc and it's going to just search uh, in your local repository and then you should be able to do context sensitive Java docking. Uh, exercise 2 is uh, download Glassfish and configure with Eclipse IDE. So basically you're going to get the adapter so go to um, you know right click the new server and then download additional server adapters and uh, then you can add a uh, new server and then you can select this one. However, um, and then however, and then you can specify domain uh, the uh, directory right here and uh, admin password and user ID, admin ID and password. However, however, as uh, as of now, the Glassfish adapter is not really working well. So you probably see this message: new Glassfish server. I mean, in, this is a case that I have seen when you install the NetBeans, which comes with the Glassfish. And then if you try to install that Glassfish with the uh, Eclipse, uh, this is what you get. Uh, somehow there is some issues. Uh, in fact, there was some actually uh, the, some step flow overflow discussion on this. So you have to actually install it uh, in a game by clicking install server right here. Right? So that's actually workaround at this point. And uh, yeah, you can actually install other Java E6 servers such as a JBoss A6, uh, JBoss App Server 6 or 7, or Tomcat 7 as well. Okay, so that is uh, very simple, uh, the explanation, uh, the hands-on app for just kind of getting your Eclipse ID and NetBeans ID getting ready for the Java E6 development. Okay, so we're going to actually move forward with uh, Java E6 uh, Servlet 3 Basics.
Okay. Uh, by the way, I'm going to actually take the questions at the end. Uh, so uh, hopefully we have about 10 minutes of Q&A at the end. All right, so let's move on to uh, Java EE6 serve let dot a 6 For those of you who have an access to javapassion.com, uh, feel free to download uh, the hands on that and uh, you can actually do the demo together with me. Okay, moving forward. So we are going to cover easy of development feature of servlet v.0 and uh, then we are going to cover dynamic registration of servlets and filters. We'll talk about pluggability feature and uh, then we are, going to, we are going to talk about resources in the bundled job file feature. And uh, in advanced servlet v.0 presentation later on, we are going to cover advanced servlet v.0 features uh, including async servlet and security enhancements and shared library concept. So let's talk about easy of development feature introduced in servlet 3.0. So basically uh, declarative style of programming to annotation is, uh, the, uh, is the theme of uh, the, uh, the uh, Java development moving forward not only in servlet 3.0 but in pretty much every Java programming in you know, annotation uh, allows you to write your programming in declarative style and which is considered a lot easier than writing code. Uh, in servlet 3.0, the web.xml file is now optional. You don't have to have a web.xml file because you can specify everything in an annotation and you're going to see that in the following slide. And better defaults, again convention over configuration, meaning default values will be set by the uh, by set by the uh, servlet 3.0 uh, configuration. I mean the uh, framework, uh, the uh, so basically the technology itself in you know, a standard actually set all the defaults for you. So the only time that you want to actually set value is when the value is different from uh, the default. Okay. So these are the set of annotations. Again, these annotation replaces the things that you specify, used to specify in the web.xml file. So web servlet annotation is for defining a servlet. Web filter annotation is for defining a filter. Web listener is for defining, oops. I'm not sure what happened. Sorry about that. I don't know why the, my screen actually kind of goes very strange mode. Okay. Wait, let me just okay for this. All right, so that's better. And the uh, web init parameters for defining init parameters, and uh, then defining file upload property is for multi-part config annotation, and then you can have servlet security annotation for defining security constraints. Again, these annotations are just uh, the uh, the counterparts that you can have in web.xml file, and you can override this annotation uh, with the values in web.xml file. Okay, so let's talk about the web servlet annotation. So this is for defining a servlet. Okay. Uh, the only thing that you have to specify, the only attribute that you can spe you should specify uh, with the web servlet annotation is URL pattern. Okay. Uh, all the other attributes are optional with reasonable defaults. Again, these are defaults of a configuration feature from servlet 3.0. So, for example, the default name of the servlet is the fully qualified class name. And uh, the class still has to extend HTTP servlet. So, let's see the example code. So, yeah, so this is actually old servlet to the other example. So, this is the way that you define your servlet, meaning you define your servlet and you have to specify in the web.xml file in the form of servlet mapping. And so, this is example of annotation rate annotation-based, uh, the uh, definition of web servlet. So here, what you say is a at web servlet annotation, and uh, this there are two different ways that you can specify URL pattern, okay? If you have only one single URL pattern, then you're gonna just use a value notation, value, so this is a value attributes, 
uh, if the name of the attribute is uh, value then you don't have to specify this so this is the same thing as this so in this case this servlet handles any URL that ends with slash uh, that contains slash foo okay? uh, this is example 2 so this is a case that you have uh, two uh, the uh, mappings so in that case you are going to use URL patterns attribute and then you're going to specify the, uh, the bracket here uh, with the two items. And here I specify the name of my servlet. Okay? So if you don't specify it, then the name of the class is uh, the, uh, the, the, the name of the servlet. And also you can specify other attributes, for example, async support, uh, it's supported uh, equal true. So again, we're going to talk about. Uh, async servlet later on in advanced servlet with that representation. So this is an example of web filter. So here, uh, just like a web servlet, uh, you specify URL patterns, and then you can also specify init params. So these are init params that uh, that is actually uh, associated with this filter. So whenever this filter is actually entered these parameters are supposed to be set for you. Okay? So in this sample code, uh, when this filter is uh, the, uh, created, uh, the init uh, method gets actually created, uh, I'm sorry, init method gets invoked. So here, basically, we are getting the value of this message, which is the value is my filter. And then we are going to uh, the, uh, the, uh, set into this uh, uh, local variable message. And when this filter is executed, uh, that is this do filter method get executed. So this code are pretty much the same in uh, the uh, servlet to the to five. And here you are basically adding the uh, message value into uh, the uh, the filter message key in the request scope. Okay, and then we pass the request to the next in the chain. So here basically uh, we define this test filter as a, a, a filter uh, handling this mapping and with this uh, init parameters. Uh, this is a case that we have uh, URL patterns. So here we have only one, uh, but URL patterns could be used when you have, uh, you have to use URL patterns when you have a multiple uh, mappings. Okay, so this is web listener. So here, uh, this is a context listener which implements servlet context listener, and then you can actually annotate with the web listener. Okay, so uh, if you do that, then this is going to be executed when the application gets started. Um, so here we have context initialized and context destroyed. So in this example, we are basically uh, the uh, have a context object, and uh, from the context scope, we are. Uh, adding an attribute whose key value is listener message and the value is my listener for that key All right, so let's do our first demo. So I'm gonna actually use uh, Eclipse for, for the first couple of exercises and then the uh, the last three, third or fourth exercise We are going to use a net means. So this uh, this is annotation wall So it the, the code is pretty much what you have seen in the uh, in the presentation so run as and run on server. So I'm going to use Glassfish. So we're starting Glassfish, and it's going to just display uh, the. Uh, oops. Oh, I guess I didn't uh, build it. Run as build. server okay so what you see is hello my servlet my filter and my listener okay so if you see the code uh, this is the uh, servlet code that you have seen okay? uh, so everything is uh, declared with uh, with the web servlet so this is my tests and you have a pattern and init parameters okay? So basically here we are going to uh, initialize uh, the value of uh, the, uh, the uh, uh, listener. Yeah, so this is actually listener uh, class get attribute 
it, you're going to see that code. And we're just displaying this. This is, in a sense, test code. Right? So let's see. Uh, so the, uh, this is uh, filter. So again, this is the code that we have 